Hey everybody, it's Sonia and I had surgery a week ago. It's almost two weeks now. I'm home recuperating. Just want to let you know I'm, doing, I'm bored to death. But I feel myself turning the corner. It's a journey that I'm going to make it. Um, this is my first time doing this video stuff, so I don't know where my eyes are supposed to be. Um, but that, 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 just take that in. Because all of this happened in a matter of a couple hours. Where, um, it could have went the other way, but God said, no, not so. Not today. Hallelujah. Um, he's so good to me. But the prayers went up. I want to talk about the prayers of the righteous. Because the prayers of the righteous availeth much. I am a prayer warrior. I'm connected to a lot of prayer warriors. My grandmothers were prayer warriors for real. And um, I just believe in the power of prayer. And. I don't know if any of you out there have ever had such a traumatic experience where you knew that you needed to pray, but you you didn't. Um, I can't honestly say that I prayed because I just really can't. I don't remember that I prayed. I remember people praying for me, but I don't remember that I prayed. I had a lot of scriptures come to mind, and I'm just meditating on those. The one is to be absent in the body, is to be present with the Lord because I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, fire baptized, all of that. Know that when I die, I'm going to see my Savior face to face. All right? Know that. And I, I'm, I'm praying that uh, I'm reciting the scriptures of um, the Lord is my shepherd. I'm reciting the scripture that he will hide you. Oh my God, I'm just, scriptures, they're rolling, rolling. All the scriptures are just flooding in my mind. And everybody that came in were praying for me, with praying for the doctors and nurses and um, I'm remembering that I had a very good friend similar situation we just hanging we were just hanging together at a Valentine's birthday party and she couldn't breathe she just kept sitting down or like she'd get up to dance and she just was winded and winded and she just couldn't breathe and um over the weekend, um, she just thought she had like coming down with the flu or something. And then Monday, I see her in church. I'm sorry, I see her in church and I see her from a distance and I wave to Monica because, you know, she wasn't a deacon or a trustee, but she was always the first one in church. I loved that about her. And I turn around, I look for her, cause then I wave to her, cause I'm up front, and I, I meant to get to her. And then by the time I got back to her, cause she sits with my aunts and my cousins, and they're like, Monica left. She said she wasn't feeling well. And then that Monday, I'm sitting home and I'm working on it, an assignment, and I get a call from my aunt that Monica's gone, and I'm like, what? She's like, Sonia, Monica's gone. What? And she tells me she's dead. She had clots. They broke up. She's dead. And I screamed. And my son came running. My brother came running. And <sighs> so I'm remembering this same similar type of things, embolisms, blockages, clots, and she's gone. And I'm here 
and they're getting ready to take me down to administer this medication and this happens and y'all it was crazy it was so crazy but the good thing is I was at the University of Maryland Medical Center I actually work for the University of Maryland School of Nursing so great research hospital equipped with everything and they were equipped with something called ECMO um, and this is a life support machine where it oxygenates your blood for you so it filters your blood out of your body through these cannabis these tubes all the blood out of your body it oxygenates it for you so the machine is breathing for me but I'm not I'm, I'm awake I was on that and I wake up to these machines and my blood is going through and everybody's trying to explain to me what's going on and I'm just like God take control Still not fathoming what all that is still to transpire because um, they had to stop giving me the heparin. And a good thing with the ECMO machine is as it's filtering out the blood, it filters out the clot just working for me. It was working for me. So doctors coming in and the clots are large. They still need to give me medication to break them down or they need to have I need to have open heart surgery you know and they schedule me for that open heart surgery um, because they doing this transition they transition they are you know they don't want to administer medication and the clot I do a clot and I'm out which you can't which did happen um, that they don't want that to happen again. So, it's a time thing. Um, so we agreed to let them start administering the blood again. We agreed for them to start administering the heparin. And um, I'm still scheduled to go down to have open heart surgery so that they can you know, get to the clots. And we're praying. I mean, bishops praying, preachers praying, lay the whole church praying, uh, family praying, friends praying um, for me that God would work a miracle. And he did. Not just one, but two. <laughs> Y'all, I sometimes I get choked up here and I'm trying not to cry on camera when I just think of the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for me. Not just that. Not just that. But in that moment, what was happening. And I, I get down there and as they're wheeling me down, it's like an entourage, y'all, because it's so many people. It's uh, the, 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 the technicians for the ECMO, because there's only certain people that can handle that. That's the machine breathing for me. And I'm in the bed, and it's the doctors and the nurses, and they're wheeling me down, and they're talking to me. And um, they let my aunt um, meet me down. She was couldn't get in there in the elevator with me, but they have a waiting room down in the operating room, and as I come off of the elevator, she's there, my Aunt Cynthia, and um, she's a prayer warrior, and connected to some prayer warriors, and she's praying, and I'm ready to blow my gasket, like, what? And she says, she arrested me and said, no, we will believe the report of the Lord that you will live and you will not die. You shall live and you shall not die. 
And she's saying that to me as they're wheeling me into the operating room. And I get myself together. I'm sure tears are flowing, but I, a calmness came over me. And I just kept reciting the prayer, Lord, to be absent in the body is to be present with you. And it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. Woo! And they give me the anesthesia. And um, as far as I know, I'm, I'm getting open heart surgery. And then I wake up a second time in recovery. And my aunt's over me and she's saying they didn't have to operate. The medicine was working. They didn't have to operate. Lord, they didn't have to operate. They didn't have to cut you. They, you know, and you know, she's saying that in my ear. And I want this trach out again because ugh, you all know that thing hurts. And um, finally, we get to the room and they tell me the doctor comes in and said that that we're gonna keep you on the ECMO machine, keep administering the medication because the clots are breaking up. They're breaking up and um, things are working so we didn't have to um, open you up and we're gonna keep you on this and see how you do and um, we're praising God we're celebrating we're excited we're just thanking the Lord that he did it for me God did it for me and then <laughs> this nurse comes in to try to put a, I have, mind you, I have stents everywhere. I have stents in my neck, in my arms, IVs, all, you know, things to take blood. And, you know, they take blood like all the time. And this person comes in to put another, just decide and, um, well, put an IV in and a pick line. And yes, and he ends up putting it right there, right there. Right there, y'all. And I developed compartmental syndrome. And they tell me my arms swell up bigger than my thighs. And they had to take me back to the OR to get the needle out. While I'm on ECMO, y'all. So all of this in a matter of like 24 hours, almost. And... Um, God brought me through that. God brought me through it all. What they what the song goes, this and that, and this, this, and that, that. And um, and you want to know why I'm telling you the story? I'm not telling you the story for sympathy. Oh no, I'm telling you because God is. There is no secret what God can do. What he has done for others, he will do for you. And there is power in prayer. Power in prayer. The prayers of the righteous avail us much. And I'm a walking testimony. I'm a living testimony of what God can do. He worked a miracle, not one, but two miracles for me. And um, and he brought me back. And I, and I just want to thank God for that. And I love him so much. I love him. 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 So praise God from whom all blessings flow. He's good God. And if you don't know Jesus, like I know Jesus, and you don't know him and the pardon of your sins, then you need, and you're watching this video today, you need to accept him as your Lord and Savior. I tell you, he will come into your heart. He will come into your life and he will make the difference. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And if you want to have prayer, you can DM me. I'm willing to have prayer, want to have prayer with anyone who just needs someone to join them in prayer. Because we all can are standing in the need of prayer. <laughs> we all are standing in the need of prayer. So that's my story time. Um, I hope that it blesses someone.
to the fact that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you believe that what you're going through, that if you turn it over to God and you give it to God, that he can handle it, that he will handle it, that he can handle it. And um, that, that you would develop a relationship with the Lord like I have. And that you will give everything to him. I don't care how small it is. He can handle it. And I don't see, and I don't care how grim it looks. God can handle it. And even if you feel like you can't go on, pray. My prayer is this. That God will show up for you in your life right now like he showed up for me and like he keeps showing up for me be blessed y'all